Hello, I'm Holly and today I'm going to be finding out how many of the top 100 fantasy books on Goodreads that I have read. If you've been following my channel for a while you might remember that a few months ago I did a video very similar to this. So a couple of years ago Goodreads created this top 50 fantasy list and they've done like a sci-fi, they've done a horror, I'm sure they've done more. And one of my long-term reading goals was to read all the books off those lists so I created three videos where I looked at the books that I had read so far from those lists and then it was kind of going to be something that I reflect on every now and again, see how many I've read. And then in July they released some new lists particularly a fantasy and sci-fi list and a lot of the original books on the top 50 lists were in that top 100 of course, they're still the highest rated. But obviously there was also a lot more books on those lists and I still want to do this series but now I have a lot more books to read. So in today's video and then I think there's also going to be the sci-fi one hopefully next week, I'm going to be looking at the books that I've read so far on those lists. And I thought because I know that not everyone will have seen those original videos I will link the top 50 fantasy video in the description box but as I said a lot of the books on the top 50 list are also on the top 100 list so there are quite a few books at the beginning that I thought I would briefly mention that I talked about in that other video so I definitely recommend going to check out that original video. So in that original video I talked about A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, the Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, The Princess Bride by William Goldman, Nimona by Noelle Stevenson, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, The Hobbit and The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien, and The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. This is a bind up of all of them, but the first published book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. And then the next lot of books are ones that were on that original top 50 list that I have have now read and the first one of those is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. This has a good read rating of 4.24 and I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed this. I think it has a lot of British humour so like sarcasm and irony and stuff like that and as a British person I really loved the humour that was in this. For those who don't know this follows an angel and a demon who are friends and they are trying to stop the apocalypse from happening. So the Antichrist is just been born and they're trying to stop him from destroying the world basically. This was recently made into a TV show, that's how I found out about this and I loved the TV show and I think that was a really good adaptation of this book so I really enjoyed this book too. I think what really let it down is the ending. I did find the ending a little anticlimactic but I think if you're looking for something really fun I would definitely recommend this one. The next book is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanders. Anderson. This has a Goodreads rating of 4.45 and I gave it 4.5, so very very close. This is the first book in the first Mistborn era which is set in this world where there are these people who can consume different types of metal to get different abilities. At the start of this book the Dark Lord, the evil villain, has won and because of this life for the majority of people is pretty rubbish. So you're following a group of individuals in kind of the criminal underworld who who are coming together to try and take this evil guy down and there's a lot of epic fight scenes in this, there's a lot of really cool magic scenes in this. I really love the characters and I think that Brandon Sanderson has a really accessible writing style so if you're trying to get into adult fantasy I think this is a really good place to start. Then we have Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This has a good reads rating of 4.16 and I rated it four stars so again I rated it pretty highly. I really love this book and I really loved the rest of the Farsia trilogy. Both the other installments I've given five stars to. I absolutely love this series and this is the first book in the Farsia trilogy which follows this boy called Fitz who is the bastard son of the king in waiting. When Fitz is a young boy his grandfather on his mother's side takes him to the keep and says that his father needs to take responsibility for him but before Fitz even meets his father his father abdicates his position and Fitz ends up getting raised 
used by the stable master and then he becomes enlisted by the king to become an assassin. I just love this series. I love the characters. I love the world. I love the magic. So there's these two branches of magic in this. You have the skill which is very revered. That's kind of what's in the royal family and that enables people to communicate with each other through their minds so they can communicate over really long distances. And then our main character Fitz also has a magic called the wit which is incredibly looked down upon. If he got found out he would be executed and this enables him to have these kind of connections with animals, to have these kind of bonds and oh I just any kind of animal magic I love. If you have any great recommendations of books that do have this kind of animal bonding magic I would love to know. I don't really have much more to say about this. I love Robin Hobb. I can't wait to read more of her books and just follow more of Fitz and all the other characters in all her other series. I'm just I'm so excited to continue with this author. And then the final book off the original list that I have read is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This has a Goodreads rating of 4.29 and I gave it five stars. I absolutely love this book. I read this pretty recently so you're probably sick of hearing me talk about it but I'm gonna keep talking about it because it's absolutely brilliant. This is set in a world where there are these apocalyptic fifth seasons so earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, that kind of thing and at the beginning of this book a fifth season has just happened. This is the worst one yet. This could be the end of the world and you're following a number of perspectives but the first one you're introduced to is this woman who returns home to find that her husband has killed her son and kidnapped her daughter. So she goes on this journey to kind of track her daughter down and while this is happening the world is pretty much ending. People are trying to escape to safer places and then there's also a couple of other perspectives I don't really want to delve too much into. I think the actual construction of this book is masterful. I think N.K. Jemison, just the way that she structured this book so so good and I have heard that some people find it a little bit confusing at times. One of the perspectives is in second person which I personally really enjoyed but I know that some people have struggled with that so do be aware that maybe you have to put a bit more time and effort into it but it's definitely worth it. The payoff is so good. Also the magic system in this is kind of earth based and people with this ability are incredibly oppressed and that does play a big role in this novel as well. So oh, just read it, it's so good. I'm so glad that I've read it and I cannot wait to continue with this series. And now for all the books that have been put onto the top 100 list that I've read. Some of these I've read a long time in the past, some of them are pretty recent reads, and the first one of those is The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.99, I gave it four stars, so again I really enjoyed this one, and this is the first book in Terry Pratchett's massive disc world. If you are looking for something that is just nonsensical, and a lot of fantastical fun. I think this one is really good. The writing style is definitely unique and I don't think it's going to be for everyone. It's a little bit all over the place and the chapters are incredibly long but I do want to continue with the series. I ha I read this, was it last year, maybe the year before, and I haven't continued the series yet but I do think that is something that I want to read at some point in my life. The next book that I've read is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. This has a Goodreads rating of 4.09 and I gave it two stars. I didn't really enjoy this book. I think that my major issue with this book is I think it wasn't sure who its demographic was. I might have gone into it with the wrong expectation of it being a children's book and actually a lot of the writing in it is very simplistic. The story is pretty simplistic but this book is not for kids. There are graphic sex scenes, there is graphic violence, like do not give this book to a child. It just didn't have the depth that I expect from an adult fantasy. It still felt very childlike and these kind of sex scenes, this violence, for me it felt completely unnecessary. I don't know why it was Included. It just didn't really gel with me. I know that a lot of people love Neil Gaiman and obviously I loved Good Omens. I don't think I've read any of his other books so I definitely want to try some more, see what I really think, but this one it wasn't the best. I didn't love it but clearly it still has a high rating on Goodreads so a lot of people do. You might enjoy it but I didn't. <laughs> the next book that I've read is Circe by Madeline Miller. This has a Goodreads rating of 4.27 and I gave this five stars. I love this book. I 
love Madeline Miller. I love The Song of Achilles too, that was her first book. I think Circe was the first book that I read by her and this is kind of a retelling of the goddess Circe. So I believe that Circe was the first witch in Western fiction or something. I'm not entirely sure, I could be getting that wrong. But she is a goddess, she is a witch and it's basically her life story, the kind of trials and tribulations that she goes on, the relationships that she has with Odysseus and other men in her life. And something that I really loved about this is how vapid and I don't know, the god world is. They truly don't really care about humans, but Circe, she does care. She is kind of an outsider in the kind of god world. I can't remember what it's called. I'm so bad at mythology, so I'm very sorry, but I loved Circe. I love Madeline Miller's writing style. I think it is quite slow, and for some people it just doesn't have the action that they want, but there's just something like quietly resilient about Circe. She has all these great powers, but her strength is very inner, and oh, she has like a lion. I love it. I love Circe so much and I definitely need to get myself a copy and reread it at some point. Then we have Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. This has a Goodreads rating of 4.18 and I gave it a 4. So again, very high ratings for a lot of these books. They are pretty good in my opinion. This is a standalone fantasy. I do believe there might be a sequel coming, but when it was created, it was a standalone. This is set in this city that is on the border of the city called Elantris, which was home to these kind of godlike inhabitants. But before the beginning of this novel, I believe it's 10 years before, Elantris has fallen and the godlike inhabitants, they've got this kind of disease that, it, I don't want to tell you much but they have this disease and anyone who starts to show signs of having this disease are pretty much thrown in Elantris and abandoned and left to rot and you're following a bunch of characters. I think you're following the prince, you're following his like betrothed who by the time she turns up he's died, he's been put in Elantris but she doesn't know that. She just thinks he's dead so she's kind of married this man and then she gets there and he's dead but because of the treaty that's in place she kind of has to become the princess. And then you're also following this religious figure who is trying to bring a certain religion to this place. Obviously it sounds a bit complex and there are a lot of storylines going on, but I really do love that kind of fantasy that you can sink your teeth into, that you can really appreciate the interweaving of all these plot lines, all these storylines, all the characters. Oh, it really, really is good. I didn't give it five stars. It didn't hit a five star level for me but it's still a fantastic fantasy and I would definitely recommend this one. Then we have Vicious by V.E. Schwab and in my personal opinion I wouldn't really categorise this as fantasy, I think this is more science fiction, but this has a Goodreads rating of 4.23 and I gave it five stars and I love V.E. Schwab, if you don't know that I really do love V.E. Schwab, I have a whole V.E. Schwab shelf which is like the top, you never see it but I have a whole shelf and this is a superhero story. It follows these university roommates, Victor and Eli who are researching extraordinaries who are people who have acquired superpowers through near-death experiences so they start experimenting they start trying to kill themselves and bring themselves back so they can get powers and then you're also following them 10 years in the future I believe where Victor has just escaped from prison and now they're arch nemeses and they want to kill each other I just I love V. Schwab and I love the concept of this book. Superheroes and supervillains, they are my thing. And this is no different. I don't have much to say. I love V. Schwab. I love her writing. I love her characters. So yeah, just read this. The next book is another book by N.K. Jemisin and that is The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.86 and I rated it a four stars. Again, I really, really enjoyed this one. And this is a pretty hard book to explain. So you're following this main character. I can never pronounce her name. I think it's like... Yani or Yani or something like that and she found out that her mother 
was the daughter of kind of the king-like figure in this world. He's not referred to as the king, but he is the ruler of these kingdoms. And because his daughter married below her station, she kind of got disowned. When her mother dies, the main character is summoned by her grandfather, who tells her that she is one of three potential heirs to rule the kingdoms. And there's kind of, like, she's trying to survive, basically, against these other people. And something that is very present in this story is that there are gods, and the gods, I really love them. They are pretty much controlled by Yane's family and kept on a leash. They have to do whatever they're told. And this, I believe, was N.K. Jemisin's first series of books. If I'm wrong, let me know. But I think these are fantastic. The world is incredibly interesting. I loved the gods aspect of this story. And I think if you've liked Strange the Dreamer, you might really like this. I think there are a lot of similarities. Obviously, this one came first. But if you like this one, I'd recommend Strange the Dreamer and vice versa. There was a lot of intrigue in this story and kind of unexplained things, which personally I really enjoy, but I know that some people don't like that. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book and it's another series that I cannot wait to continue. Also, before I forget, there is a sex scene in this, which is just the most mind-boggling thing I've ever read. So if you want some really strange sex scenes, this is, this is the book for you. Then we have Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.87, but unfortunately I didn't love it as much and I only rated it 2.5 stars. This is a British urban fantasy following this detective or policeman or something who goes to this murder and when he's there he sees this ghost who may have seen what happened and he kind of gets drawn into the kind of supernatural elements of London's police force and I really did love the premise of this but I did think the writing wasn't the best. There were some passages that I found a bit confusing, I didn't really understand what it was trying to say and the chapters were also incredibly long which personally I just really don't like long chapters. This was a series that I was intending to continue with but it's been, I'm sure it's been about a year or two years since I read the first book and I'm not sure if I'll continue. I am somewhat interested. I know that this is an incredibly popular urban fantasy series in the UK. I don't know how popular it is in the rest of the world. Maybe I could pick it up for some kind of like second chance video. That's an idea that I could do, you know, like book series or books that I'm not sure about, but we'll see. We'll see if it happens. <laughs> Then we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo and this has a Goodreads rating of 4.06 and I rated it three stars. I think when this book came out it was incredibly divisive. Obviously Lee Bardugo is very well known for her Grishaverse, So You Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone, those kind of series. And this was her first foray into adult fiction. So I think she had a lot of pressure put onto her. And personally, I didn't love this. I have loved some of her other books but the writing style in this for me was just really confusing and convoluted and there are a lot of characters that I couldn't keep a track of and the kind of reveal at the end it just it wasn't like as thrilling as I wanted it to be. Also for those who don't know what this is about this follows this girl who kind of gets this is it like a scholarship or something to Yale University and at Yale there are these kind of secret societies so she has been employed to kind of keep a watch over them and the premise of this is incredibly interesting to me. I know that it's is it a five book series so I definitely will continue with this series. I am still intrigued to see how that develops in the further books but yeah I didn't love it. I gave it three stars. That's not a bad rating for me. That means I did enjoy parts of it, but there were just some bits that I wanted to be a bit more polished. And I think the pacing wasn't the best, but yeah. Those are my thoughts on Ninth House. And then for I think my most hated book on this list, we have Year One by Nora Roberts. This has a Goodreads rating of 4.02 and I rated it one star. I despise this book. And this is set at the beginning of a pandemic that pretty much wipes out most of the world. And I can't even remember what this is about, but I'm sure you're following a bunch of characters, there's far too many characters to keep track of and none of them had distinct personalities, but you're following a bunch of characters trying to survive and something that this 
pandemic or whatever has encouraged is that there are all these people with powers, so magic and stuff. Now, I read this for the Goodreads Choice Awards and that was one of my goals for 2020. I wanted to read some of the Goodreads Choice Awards winners in the top fantasy categories and the top YA and sci-fi category and I think I would never have read this book, right, if it wasn't for that because books about like the apocalypse and pandemics and stuff just aren't for me. But the reason that I have rated it so lowly is that I think the writing is absolute trash. First of all, the dialogue is stilted and rubbish, it doesn't sound like normal people. And then second of all, I think this author really struggled with telling the reader where to look. I think the term for that is like narrative focus. It's making sure that your reader knows where to look. So for example, if say there's a dialogue and it doesn't say he said this, she said this, he said this, you can kind of just have the dialogue and your reader is able to work out who is speaking, does that make sense? But there were fight scenes and there were just scenes where I had absolutely no clue what was happening. You would have like a fight scene or something be going on and then suddenly some character would speak and you'd be like, I didn't even know you were here. You didn't even give me the description of that you were even in the room. And then you suddenly pop up out of nowhere and then you have to like go back and read it and be like, oh, maybe that's their point of view or whatever. I don't even know how to explain this, but I hated it. I think the writing was rubbish. I just... I'm never gonna read Nora Roberts again. And then the final book that I have read is The Pride of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.86 and I gave it four stars. Again, it's a book that I really, really enjoyed. And this is an adult epic fantasy, it's very chunky, that is set in this world that is divided into the East and the West. And I believe it is the East kind of revere dragons. They're seen as gods and they're worshipped. And then you have the West where dragons are despised and there are dragon slayers and stuff like that. You're following a bunch of characters and it's very much like a fantasy thing where all these people kind of have to come together to defeat this greater evil. I really love this fantasy. I think it was beautifully constructed. I loved the whole world. You had a very diverse cast of characters. There's a female-female relationship in this and I think Samantha Shannon was able to balance all those things incredibly well. As I said, this is a massive book. It is a standalone and I did think because it was a standalone there were some plot points that I found a little convenient. I felt some things kind of slotted into place too easily and if it had maybe been split into two books of maybe a little bit longer length that could have been fixed a bit but I still really enjoyed this. I love Samantha Shannon. I really love her Bone Season series and I definitely want to read whatever she brings out in the future because this was fantastic and I'm pretty sure I read this in three days which considering the size of it I think is pretty amazing. It definitely kept me captivated and I would highly recommend this one. So overall out of the top 100 so far I have read 24. I think that's not bad, like 24%. Obviously it's going to take me a very long time to read this top 100, but personally I do want to be reading some of the older classics and kind of seeing the books that are the foundation of fantasy, as well as obviously the ones that are coming out. There's quite a few recent books on that list. Are you interested in reading the top 100 fantasy list? Or I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description if you're interested to go and have a look, see how many you've read. I'm sorry if this video has been quite long. I feel like I've been filming for quite a while, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye!